I was asked by Michael Christie uh, to come in and uh, conceptualize a work for their 60th anniversary. And uh, he basically gave me the open door to go for it, do you know what you feel uh, this orchestra and what this community needs. I'm always one for a big challenge, some of the biggest challenges, and uh, in this case, um, approaching the indigenous people of this country, uh, being uh, non-Native American, uh, was was daunting at first for everybody involved. You know, how, how does this non-Native person fit into this equation? At first, uh, as, as Phoenix and myself were putting uh, the proposals together for the Music Alive residency. Uh, we weren't quite sure how this would kind of transfer to the Navajo community itself. And once actually we received word that we did have this residency, it gave us the, uh, the support base to really, I think, move forward and, and try to figure out ways in which to get into the Navajo community to, to discuss this work on multiple levels, uh, socially, politically, uh, but also gathering Navajo artists and a panel of Navajo elders. As, as I think about it more and more, the residency events themselves, uh, we didn't quite know where this was going to completely lead. So the first residency was small and a little more intimate, but I think once we kind of had that taste of what the first event was in the residency, it gave us leverage on the next one to kind of up up what we were doing and you know kind of up the ante a little bit and i think by the fourth residency week it was on a totally different level and uh it's, so it's it's very interesting to to use these events as a uh as a way in which to educate uh not only subscribers uh but also uh you know, people that would not normally come to a, a concert say Seeing the premiere of this work with all of these cultures uh, coming together uh, was, was very moving on so many levels. And uh, the reason I feel uh, that there were so many Navajo um, attending the concert was because of all of the events, the residency events that we did. Uh, some of the events were um, uh, Navajo filmmakers, women filmmakers. Other events were uh, experimental Navajo composers that build their own sonic instruments and worlds and and we would have like outdoor presentations. Uh, and so what I tried to do is mix up, kind of take a core sample from all of these different aspects of contemporary Navajo life and hold residency events based around these kind of core samples, which when you see them by themselves, you think, why, why, how does that link with this piece? But when you see them all together, it not only made sense to myself, but to the Navajo people. It, that's where it paid off, and they were interested, what is this piece? You know, what is, what is this composer creating? There are more threads that have been made into the community that have definitely gathered more uh, cultural diversity in their concert hall. And I think that's, that's what this residency does, is it allows people with that, the creative uh, kind of get-go to, to actually implement some very interesting ways in which to apply residency to a community. I'm Ed Harsh, I'm the president of Meet the Composer. What you've just seen is people who have been involved in Music Alive residencies 
talking about their experience and talking about how it really worked for them. We want to help you take the next step, how you can build on these models that you see in the videos and make them work for you and your situation. Talk to us. Bring your ideas. We'd really like to see if there's a way that we can help you think through how the Music Alive program might actually work for you.